What's up guys, welcome back. Um, so we'll continue on where we left off from probability models for Markov chains, and we'll look at the algebra of calculating transition probabilities and marginal probabilities from the one-step transition probability matrix. Now fortunately, the calculations are quite simple and intuitive, and we'll be able to derive a very important general result in the world of Markov chains, namely the chapman Markov equations. So let's jump in. Cool, so recall that we capture the behavior of the Markov chain in terms of the so-called transition probability matrix, which collates the probability of the process moving from any particular state to another in a given number of steps from some reference point in time. If we assume time homogeneity, uh, this matrix will look the same regardless of where it is in time. So that is, the reference point is irrelevant. Now, I also claim that when we assume homogeneity, we can characterize the process by simply looking at the one-step transition probability matrix. This follows since once we have the one-step transition probability matrix, uh, we can easily calculate the t-step transition probabilities from the one-step transition probability matrix. So, if we're given a one-step transition matrix, we can subsequently calculate useful statistical quantities that we're interested in. Indeed, in real-world applications, uh, we'll typically parameterize the one-step transition probability matrix, estimate the transition probabilities based on some time series, and then we conduct the analysis based on the inferred transition matrix. Okay, so we'll cover more on that later. But to see how these calculations work for deriving the t-step transition probabilities from one-step transition probabilities, it's probably best to start with a simple example and some basic probability theory that you should already know. So let's consider a simple two-state Markov chain. So the process can thus either be in one of two states, so state one or state two at any given point in time, and the one-step transition probabilities are captured in a simple two-by-two two matrix. So I give you the two-by-two two matrix, and then I'm going to ask you questions about the process. Okay. Now consider the following. Given that the process is in state one, what is the probability that the process is in state two two steps later. Okay, so I give you a one-step transition probability matrix and I'm asking you something about two steps. Well, we can do this calculation by applying the law of total probability to the two-step transition probability. So that is, transitioning from state one, the process can potentially take two paths to state two, one through state one or another through state two. And the or is important there. Okay, so we partition along those events and we apply the law of total probability, which gives the probability as the sum of the probabilities of the process being in state two at time two and having passed through either of the possible interim states at time one, given that it started in state one at time zero. Okay, so we end up with a nice conditional and we sum over all those probabilities. Subsequently, by conditioning, we revise the expression as the probability of the process being in state 2, given that it was in one of the interim states at time 1 and started in state 1 at time 0, multiplied by the probability of moving to the interim state at time 1 from state 1 at time 0. Okay, and then we have to sum again over all of the possible interim states it could assume. Now, since this is a Markov chain, which by definition exhibits the Markov property, uh, the probability of the process taking on state two at time two from a known position at time one, i.e. the interim time point, depends only on the state of the process at that time, so the interim time point. Um, and the history of the process prior to that time is irrelevant. Okay, so we drop the and starting in state one at time zero, and we arrive at the product of two one-step transition probabilities but summed over the possible interim states. Okay, so since we have the one-step transition probability matrix and it looks the same at both reference points zero and one, either the starting point and the interim time point, we can now calculate the relevant two-step transition probability. Now we can repeat this calculation for any number of steps and any combination of states. Um, indeed, if we permute over all pairs of states for two steps, we can collate the resulting probabilities in the two-step transition probability matrix. Uh, we can then repeat this process for three steps, four steps, or any desired transition horizon. Now, doing this element-wise by hand is obviously tedious, so we generalize the procedure at the hand of the so-called chapman kolmogorov equations. Okay, so here we go. For purposes of the exposition, we'll make use of a general reference point again, S, um, and the result we'll prove is as follows. So these are the Chapman-Kolmogorov equations. 
The probability of a Markov chain starting in state i at time s, transitioning to state j t steps later, is given by the sum over all k in Cal u, where Cal u again denotes all the possible states that the process can assume, uh, of the probability of transitioning from state i at time s to some state k q steps later. So this will be some general interim point in time and interim no, interim state k. Um, multiplied by the probability of transitioning from state k, so from that interim state at time s plus q, the interim time point, to state j t minus q steps later, so the remaining transition horizon. Uh, and this expression holds for all interim numbers of steps q running from 0 to t um, and all pairs i and j. Okay, now the proof of this expression works exactly like our example calculation. We take the probability we're looking for, namely the t-step transition probability from state i to state j. We then pick some interim point in time between the reference point and t steps later. Um, we then apply the law of total probability to arrive at the probability of being in state j at time s plus t. Uh, and having passed through some state k at time s plus q, given that the process started in some state i at time s, and then we sum over all k to account for passing through any state k at the interim time s plus q. Okay. We then apply the conditioning argument to arrive at the product of two conditional probabilities, one of which again simplifies by way of the Markov property. The resulting expression thus is the product of two transition probabilities moving to and from some interim state k, respectively, evaluated over two transition horizons which add up to t, the original time horizon we were interested in. And then we of course have to sum over all possible interim states, uh, accounting for the possibility of moving through any one of those states. And that concludes the proof. Simple as that. Now it might not be immediately obvious why this is a useful result. But the keen eyed among you would have likely spotted a familiar pattern in this expression. Um, indeed, uh, if you consider the addition or the definition of matrix multiplication, one can easily identify the Chapman Kolmogorov equations uh, as giving the elements of a matrix uh, which results from multiplying two matrices. Using our notation from earlier, we note that the equations can be written as follows the t step transfer in probability matrix starting from time s is simply given as the product of the q step transition probability matrix starting from s post multiplied by the t minus q step transition probability matrix starting from s plus q so remember that s plus q is the interim time point now dropping the reference points under the assumption of time homogeneity the expression further simplifies and indeed the implication here is that we can calculate the t-step transition probabilities by simply powering up the one-step transition probability matrix. So for example, the two-step transition probability matrix is just the product of two transition probability matrix with a one-step transition horizon. Likewise, we can evaluate the three-step transition probability matrix by post-multiplying the two-step transition probability matrix we just calculated uh, with a one-step transition probability matrix or vice versa, we can swap them around because the, the time horizons don't matter. And indeed, we can continue until we have the t-step transition probability matrix. Okay, and you know that's the main application of the Chapman Kolmogorov equations. Um, this allows us to calculate the t-step transition probabilities from the one-step transition probability matrix. Right, so the Chapman Kolmogorov equations allow us to calculate transition probabilities over varying transition horizons. So these conditional distributions are obviously critical to the analysis of Markov chains, but we may also be interested in the unconditional distribution of the process occupying a set of states at a given point in time. Okay, so that is, um, let the individual probabilities uh, be denoted by delta is, uh, which is just the probability of the process being in state i at time s, then if we collate these probabilities into a vector, um, so boldface delta s, um, then we may, exam for example, wish to calculate, say, the distribution boldface delta s plus 1. So we want to check how that distribution evolves over time. Okay, And we're looking at a one-step transition horizon here. Now, fortunately, it turns out that 
this is quite simple to calculate in general and indeed we have that delta s plus one transpose is just equals to delta s transpose post multiplied by the one step transition probability matrix likewise we can calculate delta s plus t so over general time horizon t by post multiplying by the t step transition probability matrix and now that we know how to calculate the t step transition probability matrix um, this calculation becomes quite routine now indeed these expressions make sense if you consider the individual elements of delta. Um, so for example, delta j s plus 1 is just the probability of the process being in state j at time s plus 1. Okay, so simple statement. If we apply a partition rule, um, we can calculate this as, for example, the sum over all k of the probability of moving from some state k at time s to state j at time s plus 1. Um, so a conditional probability, which is read off from the transition probability matrix, uh, multiplied by the probability of being in state k, so some state k, at time s. And I reiterate that we sum over all k to account for all of the events in the partition that we've uh, constructed. Okay, now substituting our notation, uh, we again see an expression familiar from matrix multiplication. Okay, now again this might seem a bit on the nose, um, but unconditional probabilities also play an important role in both the um, practical calculations around Markov chains and the analysis of Markov chains. Um, indeed, we'll revisit the idea when we discuss stationary Markov chains later in the course, um, and we'll deal with questions uh, which are phrased such that they require you to evaluate uh, unconditional probabilities. So they are nevertheless important to know and understand. Cool, so that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'll leave some minor notes on screen for you to check out um, that may become relevant for later discussion. Um, so you can just pause and have a look at those. Um, and then I'll also leave some homework problems up uh, for you to try out. So I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.